Rainbows are wonderful. They're literally colors flying in the sky. It is fundamentally stunning, yet it's underrated and underappreciated by us. Some do appreciate this phenomenon, while others don't seem to care much. We've been taught in school that this awesome art contains all the possible colors in the world, but with a simple glance at it, it is clearly noticeable that a lot of colors are absent. Where's white, for example, and where's black, where's brown, and where's pink? For the people who are too lazy out there, I'm gonna show you the simplest experiment in the world to make a rainbow at home. First, you need a flashlight and a CD, and the room has to be completely dark for this. Then you have to carefully place the CD horizontally in front of the flashlight. And there you go. From this simple rainbow that we just made, we can notice the same thing. Well, black is not in rainbows merely because black is the absence of light. Black is not a color, black is no color. Oppositely, white is the aggregate of all spectrum colors. And what about brown and pink? Well, we first have to understand how we see a color in the first place and how we differentiate between them. Well, colors are mainly determined by their wavelength. What is a wavelength, you might ask? Well, visible light sometimes acts as a wave and sometimes acts as a particle. When it does act as a wave, it has a wavelength. The wavelength of the light wave that's hit in your retina determines which color you see. For example, red has a wavelength of 680 nanometers, while brown has a wavelength of around 600. What about pink? Well, pink does not have a wavelength because it's not a part of the spectrum colors we know. It simply doesn't exist, and that's why it's not in rainbows. But how do we see pink if it doesn't exist? Well, first we have to ask how our eyes interpret colors in the first place. In your retina, at the back of your eyeball, there are two types of cells. Rod cells, which work when light is absent, are very dim in the scene you're looking at. These cells are not capable of seeing light, which is why you only see in black and white when you're in the dark. The second type of cells is cone cells. These are the cells that make us capable of seeing color, and there are 7 million ones of them. There are three types of these cone cells, ones that are sensitive to red, others to blue, and finally green. When a light wave reaches your retina and the green cones light up, for example, it means you're seeing green, and the same for blue and red. But what happens when you see yellow, for example, you have no yellow cone cells, so your red and green cones light up. Your brain immediately detects that and sees the spectrum color between red and green, and it's yellow. And we can see that from this simulation. It is called sim bucket simulation, and when we activate the red cones and activate the green cones, we get yellow. Now let's get to the problem. When your red and blue cones activate, your brain as usual looks for the color between red and blue in the spectrum of colors, and that color is green. But the green cone cells don't detect any green light at all. In this case, and in order to solve this paradox, your brain creates and imagines a new color, pink. And we can get this from the same simulation as well. When we have the red cones and the blue cones activated, we get pink. People who really like pink, don't be disappointed. Keep in mind that colors in general are all made up from our minds, which means that colors are only inside your brain. Me and other people could be seeing entirely different colors from you. It's just that pink is a little bit more made up than the other colors. Thanks for watching.